Hello, everyone. Welcome uh, to this conversation about civics, about um, civic engagement, how we can all get involved in civic season this year. Um, my name is Bronte de Cardenas, and I'm a digital historical interpreter with Monticello. So normally, actually, I've been working on these live streams behind the screens, and um, today, happy to join you here. Um, and this time, as I'm also a um, civics season design fellow. We'll talk about what that is. Um, and joining me, we have uh, Nia Mosby um, from Made by Us. She's the coordinator over there. Um, we have Adam Razan, who's the director of programs and audience development at the Smithsonian uh, National uh, Museum of American History. And we have Teresa Aquino, uh, also a civic season design fellow. All right, thank you all so much for for coming today, for joining us, I'm excited. Um, well, let's get started with um, what what is made by us um, before we dive in further, um, and anybody can take that uh, as they like. Yeah, I kind of jump in really quickly and get started with that. So, made by us is a coalition of history museums and institutions who are really working to kind of bridge the gap between their institutions and Gen Z which falls into kind of like that 18 to 30 category. So Gen Z, um, younger millennials. And so what we're really hoping to do is kind of, kind of build an on-ramp for that group to feel like they can be more involved with these institutions and by way of doing so, feel like they can be more civically involved, feel like they can be more a part of the democratic process and hopefully do what they need to do to take our country to the next kind of, stage and uh, kind of turn around for the best. So yeah, that's kind of the quick little what made by us is from my perspective. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's absolutely right. I mean, right Nia, it's, it's, it's a bridge. I, mean, I do think there's this milestone up ahead, you know, the 250th. Um, I don't know how often everybody thinks about that in their daily lives. I think it's a kind of a neat milestone for like for like individuals, for the nation, for organizations. But I, I love what you said. I really see it as a bridge, and not just museums, right, Nia, and everyone. It's like like made by us. It's, it's like community organizations, it's libraries, it's individuals, it's schools, it's groups. It's it's kind of um. I don't, would you call it a movement now? Is that are we are we are we at a movement level? That's that's what we're working towards. That's we're definitely working. what we want this to be. <laughs> Make yeah. it a thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I I see like civic season uh, as part of like and made by us as a part of almost everything that we do. I guess from the perspective of someone who is introduced to made by us, like just this just last year, I've seen it as like a space where that works to meet young adults um, looking for ways to get civically engaged and whether it be learning more about local history or taking part in political events, I, I've seen it as like this one-stop shop for all things civics. And it's, it's been really cool being involved uh, this past year. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, that's a great comprehensive view of what, what this amazing institution is doing. And civic season is just right embedded in that, right? And this, okay. this particular period of time that we're, that we're talking about. Um, what, maybe Nia, how did it come about? What, where did this start? Yeah, so it really started from just wanting to kind of find that space in that moment where we can really um, honor and celebrate these different points in time and really concentrate on the ways that we can engage with, the, with each other, um, with these institutions during this specific period of time. So of course, with um, Juneteenth becoming a national holiday, and then of course, July 4th, that kind of seemed like the perfect timing and kind of uh, place to kind of place this kind of time for civic season um, and bring all these institutions under this kind of one unifying moment. But it's but it's but it, but in some ways, you know, right? And everyone, it's it's a little bit bigger than that because while this is year two, you know, um, year two in the sense that we're building a new national season, not just a holiday or two holidays, right? This this period of time, there's always been civic life and civic participation and civic activity. Right. Wouldn't, he, wouldn't everyone say on the call, like we just had to find a, a moment to kind of put a stamp on it and, and kind of create the, the invite. But I almost wonder is civic season, it's almost seen like it's, it's outgrown even us, like the four of us in our organizations and the, the wider group, which is beautiful. So maybe we have to kind of spill that out a little bit or spell that out a little bit. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I agree. And it's been incredible. So we kind of officially like social wise have kicked off civic season over the past week. And it's incredible to see how all of these organizations. So this is the second year of doing civic season from the first year of us doing it, how all of these organizations have take civic season and really have crafted it to fit their organizations, but to make it special for what they're trying to present to this audience. And so it's, it's, it's incredible to see how it's much bigger than what we've been able to provide for them. They've been able to say, this is how we want to celebrate this moment. Um, and it's been amazing to see so far. And I, yeah. I see it going both ways as well, like with the institutions actively reaching out to folks that are Gen Z and millennials. Um, I've noticed personally, and I'm sure they have noticed that uh, a lot of people want to learn more about history and be civically engaged right now. And there are folks actively trying to change the narrative surrounding the world that they're going to inherit. So seeing institutions kind of meet that need has been, honestly, like uh, working in tandem has been very great um, and working towards civic season and making it like an actual, um, not just day, but like period where we can celebrate our democracy has been really wonderful. Yeah, and I think Adam's right, right? There's this energy exists. It's just putting it into, um, like a focus that gives it maybe that power that's really cool to see in action. And can I just say one thing? Um, it's true. It's absolutely true. And, and I really hope folks do go to uh, the Made by Us website to check out Made by Us. It's, it's in a really amazing effort and initiative and you can see hundreds, hundreds of things on the site. But Civic Seasons is not just Gen Z focused. And it's not just for the museum, the museum community, and the Gen Z uh, um, public. It's it's everyone, right? It's everyone fits in, and that's why, for example, in Washington D.C., where I where I work, um, you know, we've had great success with our community partners from, like, for example, the D.C. Public Library because they see immense value in utilizing this period of time. It, it, it fits in with almost. Well, I think everyone like there's I can't find or think of an organization or a group of uh, folks that can't somehow find a way to contribute, participate, enjoy and celebrate. And that's included a uh, business, you know, or nonprofits and schools, um, certainly museums. And um, it just it was so open. Well, that's what I personally love about it. Yeah, I agree. It's been great seeing um, we have municipalities who have been getting involved, local cities who are getting involved. We've had um, organizations at the state level really taking in civic season and really um, becoming a part of this movement. And that's really cool to see that, yeah, it's not just history museums or institutions. It's really just culturally around the United States. It's, it fits wherever you want to meet it at, which is really cool. On the individual level, can can anyone participate? Yes, and that's really okay. big. It, yeah, so um, we have hundreds of programs and resources on our Civic Season website that anyone can engage with. Um, what's really cool about this year and in tandem with our design fellows, they really worked hard to kind of craft the type of programs and resources that are available to everyone. And there's something for everyone, whether it's more your kind of beginner, you're really just trying to learn more about these different um, either points in history or points culturally or civically into much more of a deep dive. Like you you are like a history buff. You are like simply engaged. You go to every protest. You are just, you are involved. And so um, there is a great mix between all of these things to make sure that you are able to find how you best fit. And um, also we have these things called our Civic Season Superpower, which is an awesome quiz that you can take online to help you find the ways that you can see what is the best program and resource for you as an individual to kind of involve yourself with during Civic Season. But let's go back to your question, though, because I think it's a really good one, right? You know, what can the individual do? And and I think Nia just did a great job explaining, like, you know, the the like the organization. What, like, what if you like Googled us? What you would see behind this amazing website, which is just an enormous encyclopedia of all the things you can do and all the things you can find out about and, and get involved. But really, at the individual level, it, this is just a period of time where we get to celebrate, get excited, learn, do. Um, as an individual, as an organization, um, whatever the configuration is, people doing stuff to make a better, right, fill in the blank, better school, neighborhood, um, 
community. And and what's crazy about it, and I didn't understand this until we really got involved with civic season, is that we call that civic life. It just mm-hmm. you know, we had to put a name to it, right? Right. Yeah. Again, that energy that we're just that we're just jumping onto and 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 all kind of jumping on that same wave. Yeah. Exactly. When you guys mentioned the 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 institutions. I wanted to talk a little bit about how they are getting involved, right? Because mm-hmm. it's not just made by us um, doing this. It's there's there's you know made by us is doing that connecting that bridging. So how are those institutions involved in civic season? Well, let's make sure if anybody else wants to jump in. No, no, Adam. Yeah, <laughs> like Adam looks like he's, he they Adam. are. Sorry, go ahead, Teresa. Were you about to say something? Oh. Um... No, go ahead. <laughs> go okay. ahead. <laughs> no problem. Um, they are jumping in in a lot of different ways, whether it is kind of the, of course, a big part of being a part of the Civic Scene campaign with providing programs and resources uh, for everyone to be involved with during that time period. They are sharing out their own resources through social. They're really big on just kind of getting the word out about civic season and how important of a time this is and really how best to engage. Um, But they're also doing things like sharing it with their local communities and kind of um, making sure that it fits whatever need for that community. Um, so it's it's many ways to be involved, whether you're submitting a program, whether you're just getting the word out as an organization, um, whether you're hosting the event during our kickoff that I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more about. It's just there's many ways that you can be involved as an organization during the season. Yeah, and I guess to talk more in depth about just how involved that they how involved they are um, as a design fellow, part of our part of our role is um, helping these institutions with consultations. Um, They've been coming to us with questions like, how do we make this programming fit a certain demographic? Or how do we make this programming, um, I guess, more interesting for those, especially for those who don't, who have never really gone out to seek um, something historical or something um, that would get them civically engaged. Uh, So working through with these institutions across the US, has been very interesting to see just like what we've been able to come up with, especially as we kind of come, sort of come back from the pandemic. Now we have like all this flexibility, we have online events, we have in-person events. So what can we do to reach out to these various groups of people, especially since they're coming from uh, different levels of prior knowledge and different kinds of interests. Um, And it seems like a big task, but honestly in working through that, I think together we've been learning more about um, what it is to be civically engaged and what it is about our history and what do we really stand for. Um, and yeah, it's been, it's been really fun, <laughs> I guess. And when you say institutions, like you, you're, you mean actually just like museums across the country uh, mm-hmm. uh, and, you know, communities, libraries, like, should we yeah. make a few examples? Yeah. We'd love to hear yeah. like some of the stories you've been, like some of the projects you've been involved yeah like mainly it has been museums um but i guess if i were to highlight a group that hasn't been a museum i i know activote um was an app that came to us saying like hey we want to make this civically engaging app like how can you help us figure out some of the uh logistics of how this app would work would this make sense for this age group does this phrasing um make sense to you and working through that has been really interesting to see just how broad the spectrum can be um, on the political scale and also just um, working together to figure out um, just the amount, the levels of ways we can get folks involved can really go beyond just like, um, just, you know, going to an in-person event. You can download an app now. You can really stay updated on your phone. It's It's been interesting to see all those different ways and it's been very, um, very fun to have folks even come up to us as design fellows saying like, hey, we see you as part of this group or we see you as part of these people who are looking to um, make a change. So we want to meet you in the middle and kind of provide this resource. Wow, that's, a, that's awesome. It's well, amazing, um, yeah. I'm kind of curious, Bronte, do you mind if I ask a question? Like, I would love to hear, like, what, are, what, are some of the, um, what are some of the examples of, of, of how museums um, are participating and then maybe even we can share like I'd love to hear what Monticello is up to you know when you when you're when you when you have when you work at an individual organization you sometimes don't always have to hear about all the other amazing things so this might be a great I, I would love to know what everyone's doing and what are some of the neat programs um, that we can kind of like f- find out about 
Yeah, well, so um, we we submitted some some different events. Um, I did not submit them. That wasn't my job, but uh, I've, I've been reviewing events as a design fellow. Um, but um, no, we've, we've submitted some different events for one, um, the July 4th naturalization ceremony that is something that we just do anyway. So that's been interesting to see. I think that that's the beauty of this is that these are events, these are um, projects or activities that uh, museums or other institutions have had in the place. And it's about connecting it to, um, to the right people, to the people who want to engage with that. Um, may, maybe it's creating a new event, but maybe it's something that already exists that's really cool and it just needs the opportunity to be seen. Um, and um, we also have the Feast of Reason um, activity. Um, so we've it's this conversation um, activity that um, helps people with these civic conversations because clearly, at least in our experience, in my experience, people want to talk about these things, they want to engage, they want to dive deep. Um, and not just with their tour guide at a museum at Ronatello, they want to talk with their friends and their family, um, but they're really hard conversations. And this is a way, it's just like a tabletop conversation game um, to kind of give some structure and some um, facilitation to a normal conversation they might have. So like it's feast of reason. So it's like food, um, but it's food and civics which is a great Jeffersonian combination right there. Jefferson loved uh, dinner table conversations and used them very strategically. Um, but you've got your appetizer cards and your entree cards and your dessert cards, right? So helping you warm up, dive in and reflect uh, and come out of it. And people will have a great time and laugh and stuff. So that's been kind of the, the goal here. So June 12th for us, we're going to be um, playing that game um, um, on site um, for our kickoff event. It's full already, but if people want to, um, see it in action made by us is going to be doing it um, also in Atlanta uh, for their live stream and you can see that on the website but maybe I guess maybe we want to talk about what's happening on June 12th yeah definitely so um, so we talked about how all of these programs and events and resources are happening throughout the country but we wanted to make sure that June 12th was kind of a unifying moment for us to kick off everything that's going to be happening across the United States. So we will be having a in-person kickoff event in Atlanta with Atlanta History Center. Um, we'll be at their Midtown location, but we will also be having kickoff um, either parties or events happening all around the country, just like you said with Monticello, um, and we'll be live streaming it as well. So with the kickoff in Atlanta, it's really just going to be like a fun kind of block party, just a a day to really just enjoy and celebrate and really reflect on what's going to be happening the rest of the season. So we'll have music, there'll be food, um, we'll have a really cool thing called a civics festival. So local civics organizations from the Atlanta area will be there to kind of help people um, learn about their organizations, sign them up for opportunities. The big thing is we're trying to meet people where they are and let them know the ways that they can be involved and this is one great way to do it. And we will be, of course, doing um, the Feast of Reason panel discussion. We have six really cool kind of local and national um, speakers who are involved in food in some way. We're doing a Feast of Reason discussion. Of course, you're going to, that's the crowd we're going to find. So they will be there um, to, uh, They'll be there to kind of go through the games, uh, give everyone a taste of what they do, what what they can do with the Feast of Reason. And then if you want to, you can do it from the comfort of your couch at home. And so we'll have that featured on the Civic Season site. Um, so that's gonna be happening that day. And like I said, things happening across the country, Monticello, Wyoming State Museum, um, Arts Ed for All, there's so much going on and it's incredible. So we're really excited to see um, how everyone will really celebrate in their own way the start of civic season. Yeah, and um, also just wanted to speak on the satellite events. I unfortunately can't make it to Atlanta, but I'm in California. I'm really looking forward to going to Arts Ed for All in San Francisco. So hopefully for folks that might be in California listening, if you're in the area, please come by. Um, but even beyond like uh, doing the live or going to in-person events, if you can only tune in with the live stream, like invite a couple of friends with you. Like this is a celebration and the celebration is fun with others. 
And it may seem, I guess, I, I one thing that my friends have told me is that, oh, this is kind of a nerdy thing. Well, yeah, it is. But you'll never know what you get out of it if you don't try it. Having your friends come together and celebrate democracy or celebrate civics and celebrate the season, I think you'll come out like learning a lot about one another and yourselves. Um, so really, uh, yeah, it's just like a party for democracy. Wait a minute, can I ask? So I know like it's it's cool to be nerdy now, right? And I, just, <laughs> I, just think so. yes. I might be showing my age a little bit here, right? Um, but I don't know. I mean. I, I, like one of the things that I'm I, I'm really curious about and, and almost like unfortunately, I think maybe I have to wait to the end of the civic season. Right. This, I want to see like like all the things that come out of it. Right. Like we only know or at least I only know some of the things that we've like planned, what, like what folks are putting into it and what they've submitted. But I'm really curious about all the many ways people share and show the ways that they come together. Um, right. And, and, and in some ways, like the thing that I've become really, I think, a lot more about is because of the pandemic. Right. It's just what are people doing on the like neighborhood street by street, block by block level? And I'm so always amazed by like the little acts of kindness, even when somebody just puts in like a, a little free library, you know, and I don't know if that's nerdy or maybe if you put in a little free library, that's like uh, uber nerd, that's like super nerd. And that's a good thing. But like, I'm just always amazed by the little things that you, you, you know, that you, you see or you read about or that someone shares, because I think we need that. And, and I think to me, that's like a part of the civic season I'm excited about. It's just people, and maybe they don't know that they're civically minded or it's like they're just doing these awesome things. But I, what I'm hoping is that people start to name what they're doing and share the ways that they come together or the ways that their organizations or, the, or what they're uh, doing with, to make a better culture at their business or culture at their school or the things that they do for their like whatever that is like you know if you're a parent and you volunteer your, your school a kid's school that's amazing that's civic season right we just we never said that and i think that to me is a different thing but maybe it's narrated to show up to uh, uh, a watch party i don't know <laughs> well, but like you said i think it's a, it's it's people who care and so to me mm -hmm. what's been beautiful about this is is connecting with people who care and like also want to do something right. like, because because I feel like at least for me I found a lot of hope just being a design fellow because there's been a lot of despair I think in the world and right. it's really nice to like have something like a structure like yeah you can do something about this um, or just recognize like you said the things that you already care about and that you already do are part of civics right you're already part of the equation you're already part of the community it's just connecting with the rest of yeah. the community right yeah you can do something an individual can actually make a difference yeah what i love is kind of like the activation that we're doing um both like in person and online we have these amazing posters from globe and they feature kind of our catchphrase that we'll be using throughout um, the civic season it says i stand for blank when i blank so it allows people to really think and to really reflect on what they may not even be realizing is something civically engaging that they're doing in their life to make a difference. And so I know for me, mine's like, I stand for my daughter when I do work with May by Yes, because I am actively thinking, I actively believe that what we're doing here at May by Yes is trying to better the next generation and give them hope. And so I really think like, Perfect. <laughs> I love it, Teresa. I love it. And so what's really cool, too, on those uh, posters and on that prompt is that around it, you can see all the many different ways that, like, kind of the big list of ways you can be simply engaged and not even realize it. It can be something as simple as, and Adam kind of talked about it, going to get your library card. Like, that's you being civically engaged. That's you taking the step to just really be involved within your community. And I love that. Um, and it's something that we really hope people, it'll help people see where they can start. Yeah, I, I got to I gotta say, this is the, this is, there's so many amazing uh, um, ideas and elements that individuals and, and organizations and communities put forward, but this is one of my favorites. And it's actually one of the things that the I Stand For campaign is, is really a big part of what uh, the National Museum of American History is pushing to really just share this and, and, and get the word out. And I think one of the reasons why is, is oftentimes, you know, we, we hear the stories and they're really powerful about what, um, you know, the icons of U.S. history have done and, and do, right, and, 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 and very much in the present. But um, 
this is a chance to actually hear, you know, uh, what individuals have to say. And I like, I love Nia's. Um, can I share mine? It's a little- Please do, I was just gonna ask you. <laughs> yeah, it, it is hokey, so I might have to rethink this, um, but this is very much me and where I am right now. So mine is, I stand for museums. No, I stand for the public when I work in a museum, because I do, I, like, I think that's important, right? Um, but I don't know, like, what's, what's yours? I would love to hear what, what, what the two of yours are. Yeah, I can share mine. And honestly, I've done this activity three or four times now, and it changes every single time. I think that one of that one of the things that's really cool about the I Stand For campaign is that I have not seen um, one that's repeated. It's so oh, cool. Um, but right now, mine is um, I stand for community when I donate to mutual aid funds. Uh, this past pandemic, I've been donating to a lot of mutual aid funds. Um, and it's it's been really cool to even see other community members do the same thing. Um, and I, you're right, Adam, you bring up a great point that a lot of people are doing things that they don't even know is civic engagement. Um, and I think this simple campaign of just saying, like, this is what I stand for and connecting it to something they've been doing in their daily life has been a little eye opening for others. Yeah. yeah. What's yours, Nia? Not to put you on the spot. Oh, Nia, uh, yeah, go ahead. Tell us yours again if you want. Yeah. Yeah. Mine was I stand for my daughter when I do work for Made by Us because I really believe that the work we're doing here brings hope and it really allows a voice for the next generation so yeah all right Bronte, what's your mine is very simple like like Teresa, mine changes every single time i do this as a as a fellow um but i went grocery shopping today and what i was thinking about was um i stand for the environment when i buy um produce without plastic so it can be very simple <laughs> um but that's yeah that's what i was yeah. thinking about today and if, if people watching want to you can add it in the comments tell us what your i stand for I mean, by the way, so the one thing I'm dying for, like right now, like, and tell me if I'm getting this right, everyone, like you can do it over the, over, we have like posters that people can pick up at locations and postcards. It's online on the website. And I know we're sharing that, but do we, have we seen an example yet of somebody taking the campaign and turning it into like a t-shirt, a, a, a billboard, like the planes flying over the beaches of Miami? Like, are we seeing anything like that yet? We're just getting started with the season. Okay. So I think we should just keep our eyes out on social and then we'll let you know what we find. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I'm, 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 I can't wait. I know like, you know, I never got into knitting during the pandemic, but I, I just have a feeling like we're going to see some great crochet art here. That would actually be awesome. amazing. Right. Awesome. Okay. I can't wait to see where this goes. The whole project, but this campaign is fun. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. yeah. What other things can we look forward to this civic, the second year of civic season? Is there anything we haven't mentioned? Well, Nia mentioned something earlier. Can we go back to it? Is that okay, Nia? You mentioned that like some of the communities are getting involved. Is this, this is like last year or are, are there actually like communities now are getting involved? Like you said, like cities or municipalities? I can't recall what you said. Yeah, so um, Utah, their governor has actually kind of did a PSA for civic season, which is I'm exciting. Sorry. So, did you just say yeah. the governor of Utah? Yeah, so we'll be featuring that during the kickoff for civic season. Um, we have had, uh, like the city of Madison last year, they really took civic season under their wing and made it their own. And so they'll be doing that again this year. They made like um, their own like national civic season day for the city. Uh, so that's really exciting. So yeah, it's 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 really surfacing in a lot of different ways. Um, and then also, I know, like talking back to other different types of organizations, like New York Public Library is really involved. Virginia Public Libraries, they've been putting um, together some awesome like challenges for uh, their network and their patrons to do during civic season. So it's been really cool to see all the many different ways, um, like different communities and different like, other types of just besides history museums, institutions are being come, um, becoming involved with the day. Add us back. back. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> it was a civic season black hole, but I'm back. There we go. Awesome. Yeah, and, and then we've we talked a little bit about the the live events. Anything else that people can be doing, like from home, to participate because can't all get to Atlanta or Charlottesville or. Right, they can contribute through. So we have this really cool um, 
civic season public square zine that everyone can contribute to. Um, so we're doing it through uh, Padlet. And so it's an online zine that we're really hoping will become kind of, oops, headphone, that I really hope will become kind of the scrapbook for civic season, not for just this year, but carrying on as we continue on with civic season. And what we'll be able to do with that is kind of be able to track and kind of, um, place everything that's happening during civic season in this place. So if you fill out the poster, you can place it in um, the civic season palette. If you go to an event and you um, have a great experience or if you do something specific at that event, you'll place in a civic season um, padlet. If there's a particular resource that you want to share out, that all can go there. It's really open source, which is awesome and really a place that you can express yourself during this season. Wow. Wow. Another way to connect, right? And see what everybody else is thinking and, and taking away from the experience. Yeah. You know, one thing I, I, I keep thinking about, and, and maybe because I just wrote an email about this, is I almost wonder that, you know, since, like, you know, as I think we mentioned earlier, you know, uh, Juneteenth is now a new national, it's a new national holiday, which is an amazing thing. And, you know, this is year two of, of a new season, and it's like kind of naming, uh, naming a, a period of time is, is is not just for marketing purposes but it's really like a, a way to kind of own something i actually see it see this not stopping i really see this building and growing um in a way for folks to, to get excited uh not just what they're doing for like two weeks every year but throughout the whole year but to have a moment when we can like just get really excited and i imagine and I'd be curious what others uh, like in the future, people will be having civic season, like lawn parties and block parties and, you know, uh, like it becoming like the moment when people barbecue and share, like where community organizations come together and, uh, you know, as like, I know we have to have that community celebration for our hard work, but we're going to do it during the civic season, you know, rather than just think of this one thing. Do, do you, is that realistic from what we're seeing right now? I say dream big. Yeah. Personally. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely agree. I think we're just, we're on the runway and we're steady gaining momentum and heading into the clouds and we can go like to the distance really with this. It's really, it's really meant to grow. It's really meant to um, kind of fit and change with this audience. So I think, I think that means that it can go as far as we really want it to. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. 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 Um, it would be like, in terms of dreaming big, it would be so nice for civic season to be something like so known that I don't have to explain it to anyone. I know a common topic of conversation with the design fellows is how do you explain civic season to a friend, a parent, your dentist? Um, but it'd be really nice to get to a point to where it's like, oh, civic season, the period between Juneteenth, July 4th. Yeah, I know it. Like, of course, I'm going to do the civic season thing. Yeah, like who wouldn't? Um, so can we ask, can we put you on the spot? What was your elevator pitch? Uh, my elevator pitch was, ooh, here we go. Uh, okay. I'm going to say, I'm going to form it as if I'm talking to my dentist. Like, um, <laughs> <laughs> don't you, I would usually start off by saying something like, hmm. Okay, so I'm like trying to remember everything I've, <laughs> I've like said now. Um, like, oh, you know, um, I know it's a little tough to learn about politics right now, but I know that there's like other ways to get involved, like civically. Um, I'm doing something with um, Made by Us and it's called Civic Season. And it's basically a celebration about democracy and just trying to make a change in America. Um, if you're tired of hearing a lot of bad news, like there's ways to kind of reformat that and, you know, try something else. And it's that's how I talk to my dentist. I don't know if others talk to their dentist. Like <laughs> usually, I try to get people to. Um, I think Bronte mentioned it earlier that there is a lot of despair, and people are looking for hope. Um, so, um, and I see civic season as a period of hope. Um, so, sharing that with others is what I'm trying to do. Yeah, I feel like for me, although it's fun to dream big, right now it just feels like it'd be fun to just have like this season where everybody, that everybody knows about, like you said, and it's like, oh yeah, the local museum's gonna have something going on. Let's go hang out. Like, like you know that that festivity is coming. You know that those opportunities are coming. You like get together and do that. Um, but like, um, I like I like the thinking big, but the, the, the big thing for me is the connection. And so I think the growth, the way I hope that it grows 
for now is just um yeah further further maybe more events more opportunities more um more knowledge right that more people are involved and understand and it's not a nerd thing or it's not a like vague museum thing it's just like this is what we do this is what we do just like what are you doing for fourth of july weekend like what are you doing during mm -hmm. civic season yeah i love that because i think through that right you know folks can you know learn about history and where right, they can learn about how they can actually get involved in organizations and and share what they are doing and and be so much so often right these things are hard to access and it might seem like off-putting, but here's like an invitation for this time period to actually like, like as Nina said, like get your library card, like go to like go to your local museum, like go to those organizations, um, you know, see what they're sharing on social media, and like follow that rabbit hole to get get more information, get get excited, and um, become knowledgeable, and also share. I mean, I love that. So I'm at the practice that when I go to my dentist next <laughs> and work on my pitch. It's hard to talk to the dentist, so let us know how you wrap, <laughs> <laughs> wrap all that up. <laughs> yeah. Anything else that anybody wanted to to share about opportunities this season that, that didn't get covered yet? I know we talked about the I Stand For campaign. Adam, was there anything else you wanted to say about how the National Museum of American yeah, History is getting you. involved? Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, one of the things that was so exciting is just the you know, the, the lead up uh, has been just a chance to talk to folks and talk to organizations and talk to, um, I mentioned DC Public Library, but a chance to talk to lots of lots of different organizations, um, including museums, including libraries. And and I felt that was just really wonderful. So, so much of work, our work has been just to get the word out, build support, and really lean into the various campaigns. So uh, what I would say is definitely follow Made by Us if you're not. You know, definitely check those things out. Please follow um, National Museum of American History on social media, and e-news. Um, we have we're going to be doing lots of stuff throughout the uh, um, the season. Uh, great posts that um, we're looking forward to. The highlight, lots of things going on. We try to make those connections. So it's just a great way to just just get uh, the word out and have a, a conversation, um, and you know just really lean into it. And so I'm excited, and I can't wait to kind of jump in as an individual and jump in through my organization about civic season. That's awesome. I'm glad that we've had so many different perspectives today yeah, and like yeah. we're able to get excited. I'm exci even more excited. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like each passing day. Today. Yeah, each passing day I'm like, we're getting closer to it. It's so exciting. Like the countdown is on the Civic Season website and every day I'm like on it. I'm like, it's almost here. It's almost here. So it's really exciting. <laughs> right. Countdown. Yeah. So I guess um, everything starting June 12th, yes. um, online, in person. Mm -hmm. All right, but the, the season starts June 12th? So technically the season starts on Juneteenth. The kickoff to civic season will be on June 12th. So if you're interested, check out the website to kind of see what's happening in your local neighborhood as a kickoff event that you can head to. There's also some things that you can do virtually online that day as well to kind of kick off the season. Um, if you can't go in person either for those events, there's something for everyone there. And if you don't see something, start it yourself. Right. That yeah. is you, you awesome, awesome point. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. an invitation to connect. There That's you right. go. There you go. Yes. Well, I'm and, so excited. Yeah, go ahead, Teresa. Well, I was just gonna say, please participate in our zine our, our zine. Um, you know, share what you stand for. Uh there's a the poster I just held up and I can hold it up again in a sec, but uh there's an online format. You can easily fill it out. Um, you know, share it on your social media platforms, like join yes. our conversation. We would love to see it. Yes. Absolutely. Awesome. All right. Thank you, everyone. And yeah, hope we see everyone June 12th and um, have a great civic season this year. Wow. Thank, thank you all so much. Thank you. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye.